Hello everybody, this is Bob with Reading to Flourish. Today, the story of the week is, What Were You Thinking? A story I'm about... I'm Mr. Mr. Lee! Guess what? I learned my multiplication tables! <laughs> guess what, guess what? Ask me, ask me! Two times two is... Four! It's four! Get it? It's four! Joy, you can't interrupt like that. Bob was telling us what the story of the week is today. Oh, 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 sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just so excited. What are we reading today, Bob? It's called What Were You Thinking? A story about learning to control your impulses. Did you want to tell us who it's from? Oh, yeah, thank you for sharing. It's written by Brian Smith and illustrated by Lisa M. Griffin. Oh, I'm excited for this one. <laughs> Me too, Joy. Why don't you guys have a seat and we'll get started. Okay. okay. Hi, my name's Brayden and I'm in the third grade. Just so you know, I am probably the funniest kid in my school. Seriously. I have made some kids cry and almost wet their pants because they were laughing so hard. Anyway, this year, school started the same way it does every year. The teacher explains the rules, we practice the rules, and then we practice them some more. Don't teachers realize third graders know how to follow the rules? Well, on Friday, I realized why we practice the rules. My teacher began class by saying... Good morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to... That's when it just happened. I shouted out, Talk about how awesome I am! The class giggled. My teacher, Mrs. Vickerman, said, Whoa, Brayden, we have rules to follow in the class. Is interrupting me when I'm talking to the class following the rules? No, I guess it isn't being respectful, I answered. Right. Remember, the first day of school, we talked about what those rules look like in class. And we said, One way to show respect is to raise your hand if you have something to say and calmly wait for the teacher to call on you. That is one way that we control our impulses. Control our what? I'm sorry, Mrs. Vickerman, but that sounds like grown-up talk. Mrs. Vickerman smiled and said, they are big words, but what they mean is that sometimes our bodies are telling us to do things and we have to decide whether or not to do them. Later on, Mrs. Vickerman pulled me aside. She asked, when you shouted out saying we were going to talk about how awesome you are, what were you thinking? Well, I thought it would be really funny. Right, but did that make the situation better or worse? I sat there for a second, then sighed and said, Worse. Mrs. Vickerman explained that there are times to be funny and times to be serious at school. She asked me, When is it a good time to be funny at school? I don't know. Maybe lunch, recess, and free time? Right. Mrs. Vickerman gave me a card with four easy steps to follow before saying or doing something. This didn't seem too hard. I told Mrs. Vickerman I was sorry and I would think before doing things from now on. Later that day in P.E., we were playing a new dodgeball game. The only rules were you could not hit kids in the face and you could not go on the other team's side. My team was ahead and things were going great. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Amanda sneak over to our side and hit one of our players with a ball. Like a cheetah, I sprinted over to Amanda and threw a ball right at her face. Just as the ball was about to hit her, coach called out, Brayden, get over here right now. I saw Amanda on the floor crying and knew this was not going to end well. Then I heard the same words again. What were you thinking? I explained how I was mad Amanda cheated and that's why I hit her with the ball. Coach did not look happy and told me I needed to control my impulses. Coach asked if hitting Amanda with the ball made the situation better or worse. Worse, I whispered. He pulled out the tips card from Mrs. Vickerman and asked if I followed any of the steps. I realized I didn't even follow step one. Stop what you are doing. 
controlling my impulses might be harder than I thought. That day when I got home, my parents already knew about what happened at school. Mom and Dad said we would be practicing controlling our impulses at home, and they had a copy of the card Mrs. Vickerman gave me. Oh, great. I sighed. With all that happened at school, I was surprised to see Mom was making cupcakes for me. As they were cooling off on the counter, I went in like a hungry bear. I ate 12 cupcakes and then had a huge tummy ache. Mom came in looking shocked and asked, What in the world happened to your brother's birthday cupcakes for his class? Uh Uh-oh. Maybe those weren't for me. Brayden, you know you're supposed to ask permission. And with everything that happened at your school today, what were you thinking? I was thinking about how good they would taste. Did eating those cupcakes make the situation better or worse? Well, they did taste good, I mumbled. I'm sure they did. But overall, did that make the situation for you, your brother, and me better or worse? Worse, I said as I lowered my head. We went over the card Mrs. Vickerman had given me again. On top of that, I had to help Mom make more cupcakes instead of playing my favorite video game. Not a fun night. Why were these four steps so hard to follow? A few days later at school, it finally clicked. I was being my usual hilarious self with my friends at lunch. We were having a great time. Then I felt something mushy and wet smack me in the head. A kid from another class threw some jello at me and his whole table was laughing. I immediately thought he just messed with the wrong person. Time to teach him a lesson. I grabbed some of my mashed potatoes and got ready to throw a mashed potato fastball at his head. I reached my arm way back to get full speed. As my arm was about to go forward, I stopped. I got this weird picture in my head of that card. I asked myself, is this going to make the situation better or worse? I knew the answer, and though it was hard, I decided just to raise my hand over my head to get the teacher's attention. Mrs. Vickerman came over and I explained what happened. She went and talked to the other boy, and he had to go to the principal's office to finish his lunch. Whoa! Was I just able to control my impulse? This made me feel good about myself. Later in class, Mrs. Vickerman pulled me aside. She said... I noticed you had mashed potatoes in your hand when you raised your hand today at lunch. Something tells me you weren't planning to eat those. I smiled and said, yeah, I was going to hit the boy in the head with them, but decided it would be better to talk to you about it since it's one of the rules of the cafeteria. (laughs) She laughed and said, so what were you thinking? I was thinking I'm sick of getting in trouble and for once wanted to make the right choice. That's great! And your good choice did make the situation better this time. You even followed all four steps. Yep, I said. Maybe I was becoming an impulse expert. That night when I got home, my parents asked my brother and me to pick up our toys and he just left his remote control car, the one he never lets me play with, right in the middle of the floor. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought for just a second this might be a good time to take my brother's remote control car and hide it in my closet. But then again, would an impulse expert do that? I knew what the right thing to do was, so... I walked into my brother's room and gave him his remote control car. My brother said, Thanks a lot, booger brain. At first I got mad, but then I just laughed. I may be becoming an expert in controlling my impulses, but I'll never be able to control my brother. Well, guys, what did you think of the story? It was great! I know that you guys love listening to stories, 
But today we're going to do something a little bit different. I was hoping that you guys could help read a little bit with me. Oh, I love reading! I love reading too! Oh, can I go first, please? <laughs> you sure can, Bob. All right, so I've turned the page towards the card that Brayden used in the story to help him learn to control his impulses. Bob, why don't you read numbers one and three, and Joy, you read numbers two and four. Step one, what are you doing? Step two, think about what you are going to say or do. Step three, decide if it will make the situation better or worse. Step four, choose the behavior that makes the situation better. Oh, I like that one. I like how you get to make a choice. That's right. Controlling your impulses is exactly that, making a choice. But in order to make a choice, you need to do what? Oh, I know, I know. You need to stop first. And then you need to think about what would help in the situation. That's right. Well done, you guys. I'm so proud of you for recognizing all four steps and for practicing them, right? Oh, yeah. I'm going to practice them from now on. And if I see Bob reading something, I'm not going to interrupt right away, even if I'm excited because I just learned my multiplication tables. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that, Joy. Me too, Joy. Hey, what's three times three? Oh, it's nine. What's four times four? Oh, it's 16. Oh, I'm so happy that we get to play this game now. Should we go play at the park? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go play multiplication at the park. Let's multiply grass blades. Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us today, kids. And tune in next week for another Book of the Week with Reading to Flourish. <laughs>